Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In our previous example, we created a simple Spring Boot app and deployed it to the Pivotal Cloud Foundry environment. In this example, let's try to use one of the managed services available in the Pivotal Cloud Foundry marketplace and try to make use of it with our Spring Boot application. There are two ways you can create a managed services in Pivotal Cloud Foundry environment. You can either use the CLI command or you can directly use the web console. For this example, you're going to use the CLI command and see how to create a service. Let me first type in the CF command. When you type in the CF command, the CF command gives you a list of commands that you can use for services integration. First, let us type in the CF marketplace to take a look at the list of services available. Okay. So we have got the list of services available in the Pivotal Cloud Foundry environment as managed services, which you can make use of. For this example, let us try to make use of the Elephant SQL, which is nothing but the PostgreSQL as a service. Let's create a database PostgreSQL, which our Spring Boot application will use to store data. So what is the create service command? Again, let us go to the CF help file and take a look at this. The CF create command is CF create iPhone service. Let me type CF create service and we have to give the actual service that we are going to use. We are going to use Elephant SQL. Elephant SQL and then you have to mention the plans. There are different plans available. There are free ones available for you to make use of. And if you want more control and configuration on your service, then you can go for the paid plans. For this, I'm going to use the turtle plan, which is a free tier plan. And then let us give a name for our service. It's going to be Pivotal PostgreSQL. And let us click on enter. All right, looks like the service is created. You can take a look at all the services created by you by typing in CF services command. Currently, we have only one service that is created and it is created and succeeded. The operation has been succeeded. That means that services is up and is ready for use. Let us quickly go to the web console just to confirm whether the service has been created there or not. All right. I'm here in the web service and you could see here the service which was earlier empty has now one in it, which means there is one service available for us to make use of. Now let us go back to our Spring Boot application and write some code to send data to the PostgreSQL database. All right, guys. Uh, for this example, since we are going to use PostgreSQL, uh, I have added PostgreSQL in my dependency. Then I also added a Spring Boot Starter Data JPA to enable the Java Persistent API uh, for our object relations mapping with the entities. And then what I have here is like I create a student object uh, which is going to have a ID name and age. ID is going to be auto generated. I hope you all uh, are familiar with at the rate of generated value. Uh, I'm going to do an auto. Uh, there are different values that you can assign to it. You can do a, a dot identity, dot sequence, dot table. There are a lot of things available. Uh, I'm, I hope that you are aware of that. Then I mark the class as a. Uh, I have marked the class as a table for which is going to have a name student, and I also annotated the class with entity to mark this class is going to behave as an entity. Uh, in the student repository, uh, I'm going to use the curl repository to do the database actions. I have the student as a type for the curl repository and then I have one method signature to find by name and I'm going to pass in the name as a string. Let's go on to the controller. In the controller, I have a post mapping where I'm going to get uh, uh, the student as a request body and then save it to the database. And then in the get mapping, I'm going to get the name as a path variable and find the name and return the student object to the user. So in my application YAML file, 
Um, Spring gives you the auto configurations for your data sources. So I'm going to make use of it. I have the driver class name or dot PostgreSQL dot driver. Uh, the URL of the PostgreSQL database that is installed in my local machine is uh, mentioned here with the username and I don't have a password. Uh, the DDL auto is going to be create, that is, it's going to create the tables every time when I uh, start the application and it's going to run on port 9001. Uh, but for this example, we are not going to test it out in the local since we have the pivotal environment with us, we are going to test it right in the cloud. So let's move on to the manifest YAML. Uh, in the manifest YAML, what I've done is like I have added the services here. We created a service pivotal hyphen PostgreSQL and I have added the service in the manifest YAML so that the service will be bound to this application when the application is getting pushed to the pivotal cloud foundry. I've also added the environment variable spring JPA hibernate TDL auto to create. This is nothing but the spring uh, property that I'm adding as an environment variable. Okay, let's go on and let's try to push our application. For this, I'm going to do CF push. Okay, so it looks like our manifest YAML is working fine and uh, the application is getting started. Uh, the cloud controller is doing its job here okay the tarball file droplet is also being created and it's getting uploaded all right so our application is deployed successfully let us quickly run the cf apps here and get the list of applications running in our environment so we have a pivotal app the manifest and the postgre the postgre is up and running let's move on to the web console to take a look at that app all right, I'm here at the web console. You could see here the app has successfully got, uh, you know, deployed, and uh, it has been successfully started. We have one instance allocated memory is one GB, and we have the service automatically bounded depending upon the details mentioned in the manifest YAML. The route is automatically created here, and the logs file. You can take a look at the log files here. All right, let's try to access uh, the application in postman and let's try to insert some records and let's try to fetch some records for this i need the route information looks like the springwood application is up and running let's move on to our postman so i am here in the postman i have given the uh, you know the routing url um, and our uh, request mapping uri here so i'm going to create a student record with name as mark and age as 15. let's click on send the response should come back with the ID generated student object. Okay, so our application is working fine. We have got the response back. The ID is auto generated. Let us try to fire the get mapping and see whether it is working fine or not. Okay, I'm here at the browser and I'm going to fire this get mapping. All right, we have got the response back. Looks like Pivotal Cloud Foundry is responding back with the details that we saved in the Postgre database. So before we wrap this up, let's quickly go and take a look at the service and let's take a look at the tables that is created. Click on the service and you see a link called manage. Click on the manage link and it will take you to the Elephant SQL console. Click on browser and to a select query on the student's table. We have a record for student ID 1, age 15 and mark. So with this, we have completed deploying a Spring Boot application into Pivotal Code 40 environment. And we also made use of one of the MANA services to map it to our Spring Boot application. Thanks for watching guys and please subscribe for more videos.